Okay, we're gonna get us a quick flash on over here, deglazing. Knock off the burrs a little bit. Cutter's trying to get away. Okay, this is big ass cylinders. Here's the 500 stone. I'm just trying to get a new surface on here, nothing. Nothing serious. It's now how you hone the cylinder when you start. It's the amount of pressure on the cylinder after you run it. As the case is pushed on uh, the cylinder and the motor mount shove the motor one way or the other, it warps the piss out of the cylinders. That's why torque plates aren't worth a crap. It's never the same after it's installed. Never. So obviously that thing's probably got two thou out around on the bottom. Right kind of that. At least a thousand and a half is bad. That thing was pulling on my hands. I'll guarantee I had it within a quarter of a thousand when I owned it, if not closer originally. Okay, these are, uh, um, well, these are probably 500 grit stones. I use these for my plateau cut. So I knock off the titties. I gave it two strokes with the uh, 500 stone, which is about 360 grit, I think. Basically the same thing I did with sandpaper on the machine marks is what we're doing on the home. You're just knocking off the high spots, makes it a little bit smoother. It's like having, you know, 500 miles of braking already or 300 miles, whatever. Just takes the high spots off. So that's all we're doing. Makes a big difference. But you can't baby this motor when you do stuff like that. You can actually put a load on it to break it in. Grandpa out there, don't do it that way. Leave it rough as a cob. Me, I like running a little bit harder on my stuff. So. Okay, we'll let that drip dry. Okay, I'm gonna go clean these up and we'll be back. Nice and filthy now. Alright, here's the cylinder after the initial cleaning. Still gotta do some more cleaning, but. So there's what the cross hatch is now in there. The dull area here's a low spot. The cross hatch is where the home hit. So you can see all the different amount of warpage in the cylinder. This one here you can see there's more warpage in it. It's a bigger high spot. Or low spot I mean. See how the cylinder has more lows in it? So actually I think this was the better cylinder. 
don't think that was one that got around, but if you look at the bottom, you should, okay, you can see the low spot right there, that's where it got around. See right here all this wear is? That's where it's way out around at. So this is the one that was way out around. Would be my guess. Yeah, see how this one's not nearly as much? So it's easy the front one, and the front one's the better one. Yep. So there you go. This is the one that was worse, the rear one. So anyway, we gotta work on that. I'm not gonna get to assembly tonight, it's already two o'clock and I still got more work to do yet here. So I'm going to go ahead and grind these valves real quickly on the back cut. I'm not gonna grind the valve surface, just the back cut angle to make it flow better. Pick up some free horsepower. Probably worth about a 10% improvement in flow, I bet, just by doing that. It definitely makes a difference when you got a big bulky edge like that. Yeah, maybe not 10%. Yeah, the valves are pretty good. It'll pick up a few percent, though. You'll hear it in the exhaust pipe. It'll have more bark to it. Okay, so we're just going to go in here. Can't really see what I'm doing, I don't think. I can't see what I'm doing either. I work blind when I do this job. Anyway, that's the best view you're going to get. So we're going to change our valve angle. Intake will go about to there. Yeah, it's barely hitting on that side. See over here it's hitting a lot more. So the valve is slightly warped. I recenter my machine just to make sure it's not me. Doing the same thing. A different area, see if it gets any better, but usually my machine repeats whatever it does, it keeps doing it. It's the same blind. This one's any better. Nope. Recenter. See if it changes. still the same thing so these valves aren't very straight but that doesn't surprise me didn't expect it to be that far off but oh well to fix that I'd be doing a valve job right 
Yeah, pretty crappy. All right, those ones are done. See if the exhaust are any better. Different angle on these, a little bit more. Same problem. See if anything gets better. So I usually repeat pretty close, so. That time it's closer to the old valve is. Must be a low spot in there somewhere I grabbed a hold of. That would definitely change the center line that third time I did it. Said so all these valves are kind of warped a little bit, I'm guessing. Clean these up. We we'll back. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and lap the valves in now to the head. Make sure they're all good. You can see how far out these things are on this one. Pretty far. Here's the other intake. Same thing. Way out of concentric. So they're ground that way. If you look at my cut to the outside of the head, it's see how the mine diamond doesn't go in and out. The hourglass look to it, whereas the, what they ground on the valve is way the hell out of whack. So I don't know who ground these fuck these valves, but so my stuff is usually a little bit better. But you never know what they are. Every valve is made differently. But okay, so the ones that bead blasted were on the front. So this is the rear. So this is our rear head. This is our front head. See, bead blast, sand blast, over here front. That's how I identified them. So we take a little bit of lopping compound here. Kind of skimpy on material here. We're gonna lop the valve and see if we're getting a good mark all the way around or if we have a problem. These are cleaned out already. Damn it. Well, the heads have been cleaned, but not cleaning the valve guide holes. Still got sand in them, even though I already cleaned them. Okay, we'll clean them some more. Oh well. See, that sand goes everywhere. He's lubed up. I'm gonna go clean the heads one more time. Just I'm gonna brush out the bob guard holes. Get all that nasty sand out of the damn things. 
and bead combo. Okay, we'll be back.